five fundamental, fundamental freedoms uh, of the First Amendment. The five basic rights covered and protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution. And if you don't know it, will you make a good faith effort to learn it? You like it here? You see people out here? Come on. What's out there? You like it out here too? What do you think? What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Southern Draw Law. My name is James White, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, former police officer. It is my last day in Florida and I'm out here on the, the Lanai for the resort we're staying at and just decided to wear this obnoxious shirt because, well, why not? It's Florida. We don't dress like this in Tennessee, so. It's the weekend. It's time for Good Cop of the Week. So I did find an interaction and uh, it actually comes to us from the channel Rights Crispy and he partnered up with San Joaquin Valley Transparency to do like a joint family vacation and they ran into a couple cops in Colorado, had a really great interaction. So I do encourage you to go over to Rights Crispy's channel to watch it in its entirety because I'm only using part of it to kind of highlight the interaction. It's like 18 minutes long. I don't want to hijack their whole video, but it's a great interaction. They do great work. So go over and check out their channel. I just wanted to highlight this for Good Cop of the Week, so. I'll come around. Thanks. Absolutely. Hey, Triple how long you I'm Finn. Uh, so I've been with the State Patrol for a little over a year now. A little over a year? You look pretty young, man. How old are you if you don't mind me asking? In my 20s. 20s? So. That's so you like, you, do you like your job? Oh, I love so it. I absolutely love this job. Do you have your BWC activated? Of course. All right. Yep. Yep. Uh, anytime I'm... So, cool. what great thing about these cars is the lights, when you turn them on, automatically activate Good. dash cams and body cams. Oh, Perfect. So, that's wonderful. Yep. You let her go with a warning? Uh, that's up for her to discuss. That's not something oh, I can okay. really discuss. No, no, it fits in our neighborhood. It's public record, but that's okay if you don't want to tell me. But you've had a great attitude so far. Yeah. We're just on vacation with our families. We nice. Thought, Where are you guys from? I'm, I'm from the 70s, but... <laughs> 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 no, I'm from Florida. You guys are from... The other side of the the yeah. country. Let me ask you a question. Real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I, I ask every officer that I encounter the mm -hmm. same question, and I'm trying to figure out the patterns. Um, something you can't answer. It's non-political stuff like that. But uh, do you happen to know the five fundamental freedoms of the First Amendment? What do you mean by that? Mean the five the, basic mean? rights that are covered under the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. And if you don't know the answer, would you make a good faith effort to know it? I was going to say I can give you like the rough stuff I yeah, might not yeah. know it no you don't have to know it yeah so it's going to be just your uh, freedom of religion freedom of press uh, freedom for self expression protest which is kind of the same thing um, seek redress from your, from your government yeah sorry for your I'm grievances. having a bit of a break no that's right. Right. right and now. like what we're doing assembly you got them almost all so it's religion press uh, speech mm -hmm. assembly and petition Okay. And, uh, you know, protest kind of falls under all of that and stuff, under assembly or speech. Yeah. And press, you what don't you have to doing, be... completely legal. I don't... Yeah. My biggest concern when I was watching you guys was making sure you guys didn't fall in. Yeah. In the roadway <laughs> right. and just making sure you guys were safe. And, yeah, thanks, man. You know, three guys surround kind of one over here, one over there, one over there. Puts me on a little bit of edge, but I didn't... I know what right. you guys are doing. It's we we give illegal. you enough room to react exactly. if we did have a bad intention, but we don't. Exactly. I yeah. could tell just by the way you guys handled yourself, you weren't going to cause any kind of issues for me. So I was right more on. worried about you guys not falling in or just getting in the roadway. So right on. But it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Staying frosty, man. That's part of the job. Exactly. You you assess the threat, and there is none. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you ever see like police interaction videos like on YouTube and stuff? I've like seen that? a few. Yeah. 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 You follow any channels? Nope. My voice doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> Man, you know, I, I definitely appreciate your good attitude. Uh, yeah. Answering some questions. That, that question that I asked you, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of began an, uh, asking cops that question over and over again. I, I found a pattern that cops don't really seem to know them all. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys swear an oath to the Constitution Absolutely. to get that job. So I believe it's important that you guys actually know this verbatim. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I hopefully, when I'm done with my work here, Hopefully, we can have every cop remember these fundamental freedoms of the people. 
because we have a lot of stuff going on. You know, yeah. Red versus blue, left versus right, and everybody's pointing the finger at each other. But I think once people start to begin to understand their own natural rights, they begin to respect other people's natural rights. You mm -hmm. know, and it Freedom. just seems like, you know, I, I began to see this pattern of cops not really knowing the First Amendment, at least the First Amendment. Yeah. And uh, I think that's kind of troublesome, man. And I hope next time I talk to you, if I ever see you again, right. or if you find my channel, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you will. Um, I hope next time I talk to you, you can state all five like that, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, try. and tell your buddies. Yeah. Let them. Okay, so the, the first officer, I think, is a Colorado Highway Patrol officer. So I think he was actually stopping a car, and they just kind of approached him. Great interaction, had a great attitude. He knew most of the, the five fundamental freedoms of the First Amendment. Uh, didn't get offended. Um, did a great job. But as he's sitting there talking to them, we're going to see another officer approach, and we'll find out whether he makes the cut for good cop of the week. And so in California, the Highway Patrol is supposed to be the most Delta. professional agency out there. Uh, is that, is, that, is that how it is out here in Colorado as well? Like, it's, more, you guys consider yourself a more professional agency? Or? I would say overall, yes. Every agency is different. We right, all, right. I would say we keep, we care a lot about the small things where a lot of people, especially in smaller agencies, might not. How's it going, man? Good, how are you guys doing? Oh, man, we're just talking. It's called the SWAT team. <laughs> that looks like a lot more right. uniform than I got. Right. <laughs> Remember when we used to have SWAT? Now everybody's SWAT. You know? I understand I it gets scarier, SWAT, but... I think Junction's the closest thing, place that has a SWAT. Yeah, oh, really? Poncho's just trying to start theirs, but that still fooled us out. Could have fooled me. Poncho's <laughs> uh, County has one. Yeah, Montrose, they've been trying to get one going, so... You look pretty young, too, man. How long have you been working on it? I've been with Delta for about a year and a half, and then I did a year in Olathe prior to that. Do you have your BWC activated? Yes, sir. All right. And can I ask you both a question? Do you have anything interesting on those BWCs in the last month that I can do a records request and get any... any I can give uh, you the form to do any kind of records request. I, yeah. I can't remember anything interesting in the last six months, really. Okay. But you can absolutely do a records request. I have the forms in here if you'd like. Um, it's something you have to... Unfortunately, unfortunately, the state's kind of old school, so everything goes through the mail. Right. They send everything back, so... Cool. Machete? Machete? Machete, yes, sir. Machete. Right Italian? Yes, sir. Right. Parla Italiano. <laughs> Di dove in Italia? Oh, you don't speak? <laughs> this guy speaks a hundred languages, man. <laughs> I could get myself a hotel and a meal in most countries. That's about it. <laughs> hey, that's all you need. Right? I asked him a question a little bit ago, and uh, I asked every officer that I encountered the same question. You can't answer it. It's not political like that. But do you happen to know the five fundamental, fundamental freedoms uh, of the First Amendment? The five basic rights covered and protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution. And if you don't know it, will you make a good faith effort to learn it? Yeah, your freedom of speech, freedom of press. Those are the basic ones I know off the top of my head. Religion, uh, peaceably assemble, and to seek redress for your grievances. Right. And you wrestle? Yes, sir. I saw the cauliflower here. This guy is a beast. Right here. <laughs> yeah, I trained jiu-jitsu too. Yeah, I like it a lot. Cool. We got to be able to defend ourselves. You guys are miles away from being able to help somebody sometimes, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you Freedom. think that jiu-jitsu has helped you out with your, with your uh, work and stuff like that? I, I do. I really do. Discipline-wise, um, so, right? Uh, yeah, right. The discipline in martial arts is a great thing. I, I think, you know, I'm... I'm gonna... I believe in it so much my kids are gonna be doing it. Um, so... Just being able to know how to control yourself, you know, I don't get all amped up. Uh, most of the people we honestly fight with are intoxicated, right. so it's not like we it's go not a challenge. It's just like a like a, a straight brawl type right. thing. It's just someone intoxicated, just all amped up for the night. So if you can stay calm and you're not worried about having to like amp yourself up to try to hurt someone, I, nice. you know, it's beneficial. Jiu Jitsu, the ground game. Um, side of it, Jiu Jitsu is primarily like a ground defense, right? Yeah. That's where us, everything always ends up, anyway. Uh, us in our attire, you know, with all our equipment stuff, isn't always good for us. Um, specifically, right? I'm not going to sit and pull guard in my Jiu Jitsu right. stuff. Um, but, but, right, like uh, takedowns, um, 
and then being able to control the arms, you know, Kimura is a big thing I use quite a bit. Um, just being able to put someone's arm behind their back without harming them and doing it super right. efficiently to where I can hold them in a position till my backup comes if I'm by myself. Right. You know, and then just having that cardio and everything Would to you where. Say you also do some as well in situations? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you have a 140 pound guy that that whoops me like nothing you know <laughs> on a regular basis say, that, that's very humbling like females are some of the scariest people right yeah yeah females are really hard for us to to handcuff a lot of times when they're on a fight they're super bendy and they get that wild you know, rage and, and strength and you don't want to like hurt anyone right right but, right I mean, good good answers it comes man. to a point where we have to <laughs> get handcuffs on them do you believe that uh it would benefit this country if all cops had to maybe at least get a blue belt, you know what I mean? Or have at least some kind of training in jiu-jitsu. Right, so I'm a little biased towards that because I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. I actively compete in IBJJF. He um, wants his kids to do it, so of course. I haven't competed in IBJJF yet, but I just got my blue belt in two months ago. Nice, congratulations. But he said he's going to get his kids into it. My son wrestles. He just won our first national title. Number two in the awesome. country. Congratulations. Yeah, so I, uh, when I transferred to this department, I've been really interested in becoming a defensive tactics instructor. And that was one of the things that I was able to find is out east in like the Virginia, um, Chicago areas, they actually do that. Where yeah. you go to the academy and you become a blue belt in jiu-jitsu and then you have to maintain at least the blue belt through your law enforcement career. And we are fair. We're going to put this on our channels and let the stars shine. Snowflakes will melt in some other agency and they'll see you as a shining example of how to behave with the citizens. So, yeah, I mean, he did a great job. He was very polite. Uh, this guy particularly said something that I think is interesting because jiu-jitsu, I think, is a fundamental part of police training that is not consistent and not, not very well distributed amongst law enforcement leadership. Because I'm a post-certified jiu-jitsu instructor for the Gracie Survival Tactics, I know how important it is. These guys did a great job. These guys weren't driven by ego. They didn't mind having questions answered. They didn't care too much whether they were made to look silly. They, they weren't worried about that. The Colorado State Patrol officer actually offered uh, records request forms. I mean, they did a really great job. So made the cut for a uh, good officer of the week. I think it's important to, to let everybody know that, that there are still good officers out there, even though they may be based on what we see on YouTube, few and far between, but uh, it's important to show, to show both. In closing, I just wanna say specifically for jujitsu, jujitsu in my opinion, is so important to law enforcement training. And if you, if you go back and pay attention to what the guy said about jiu-jitsu specifically, the reason that I think it's so important for people to be trained in jiu-jitsu is because if you understand sort of the central themes for jiu-jitsu, one of them is energy conservation. And that means that the entire style of jiu-jitsu has to be focused on de-escalation because if you're going to conserve energy, you can't roll into every encounter at a 10. And if you're going to go at a 10, you're going to run out of energy fast and you're going to lose. And so the reason that jiu-jitsu specifically, in my opinion, is so important to law enforcement training is that it forces the officer to focus on de-escalation tactics. Because if we're way up here all the time, there's no way we're gonna conserve energy. There's no way we're gonna survive the fight. There's no, it's just an entire mindset shift from, you know, what can I do? What is the highest level of force that I can use legally in this encounter to, well, what is the lowest level of force? And and actually, Henry Gracie made a, a, a great comment about jujitsu. You know, if you're arguing with your wife, you wouldn't say, what is the loudest I could raise my voice in this encounter and still, you know, sort of survive this encounter with my wife. So the idea that the use of force continuum immediately says, well, how, what is the most amount of force that I can use in this situation and still be legally justified? It's the wrong way to think about things. You should be thinking about, well, what is the lowest level of force that I can use in this particular situation and still come away without hurting me or hurting the person I'm dealing with? And so the whole mindset shift that jiu-jitsu brings along with it is important in teaching law enforcement officers to think about things in as de-escalated a fashion as humanly possible so that we can try to keep these uses of force down. So anyway, I thought these guys did a great job. I hope you guys get something out of this. Hope you enjoy the fact that I'm trying to highlight some good conduct by police officers. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, leave a comment on the video. Check out some of the other videos on the channel, leave a comment on there as well. Until I see you again, take care. Always film your interactions with the police and keep your evidence to yourself.